Oh, hey guys, let's draw a tiling texture. What is a tiling texture, you might ask? I'm glad you asked. I'll show you. Go ahead and create a new ActionScript 3.0 file. And for this exercise, I want to set my screen size to 512 by 512. You can click here and permanently set it to that by saying make default after you've changed the values up here. And then if you come on over to the brush tool, make it taper, thick and thin. There we go. So let's see. Before I get painting, well, hmm. Yeah, I'll draw my square first. All right, R for the rectangle tool. Draw yourself a rectangle. Delete the center. Oh, aha, you may run into this sometimes. If you have the line setting to stroke color set to none, which is this beauty right here. When you create a rectangle, it's just the fill. There's no outline around it at all. So if you delete the fill, it leaves nothing behind. I want this to be white with no fill. So now if I draw a rectangle, it only draws the outline, like so. Ta -da. Sweet, so if you double click on that line there, it'll highlight. And I can come on over here and unlock my proportions. So set those to 512 by 512, which you might recall is the dimensions of my stage. But it's not lined up to the stage. So luckily we have the align window, which you can pull up through window align. I go over a lot of this in the previous tutorials, but I don't know if you guys have seen those or not. So since this is a bit of a seasonal spooky texture that I'm creating here, I'll kind of review everything for those newcomers. Welcome, newcomers. All right. So I just hit the align buttons over here. Align center and top. Actually, any one of these <laughs> works because it's the exact same size as the stage. So if align to stage is checked, it will align to the stage perfectly. I hope that makes sense. It made sense in my head. All right. So it's hard to see now because it's so thin and it's on the very edge of the stage. But if you double click on this guy and you hit F8, you get this little window here. We want it to be a graphic. And I'm just going to call this texture. Yeah. So now I'm outside of the texture. And to get inside of it, if I double click on the stage, nothing happens. I have to double click on the line itself. And you'll notice it took me inside. It does this interesting thing where it zooms out. It's like, you're going in. And it says I'm inside of texture. Inside of texture, I'm going to create a new layer. And oh, this part's important. I want to lock this guy. And I'm going to name it border so I remember it. Now that it's locked, if I erase, it won't erase that line, which is important. Now draw some doodads. Like so. Sure. Now it's important during this. Oh, gross. What's wrong with my brush? It's all laggy. Okay, that looks terrible. Don't draw bad stuff, guys, like me. If I drew a shape that's like this, and it's like, yeah, I want it to. Ooh, that was fun. I don't know what that was. That was. If I wanted it to tile from top to bottom, I could copy it and paste it. And if I come up here, it's hard to get it aligned, right? Because you can see um, there's like a gap here and it's not snapping. And that's frustrating. So I'm going to leave this here. I'm, I'm now working with a copy of the same symbol, right? So if I go inside of this guy, and I erase, whoop, notice that it erased that up there, right? If I erase over here, nothing happens because I'm inside of this instance of the symbol, not this one. This is important. This is going to come into play later in the tutorial. You always want to work inside of this guy. So I can come over here and be like trying to nail it, you know, get the exact height. And this is deceptive too. It looks like this thing here is the same height as my symbol. Well, you've got to remember that this line here 
is has a thickness to it. So if I turn on outline mode, oh my goodness, did I nail it? Did I? That never happens, guys. Snapping turned on or something? That's so weird. Okay, well, chances are it's like a fraction of a pixel off. That's so weird that I would... I am that good that I erased exactly along the line. I don't know how the heck that happened. It usually doesn't happen. Even then, just to be safe, I like to trim it just inside of the line. Trim that thing up. We'll see why in a second. So I'm going to trim that up all around. You can draw a better texture than me, I'm sure. I'm just doing this to show you the setup. All right, so I double clicked outside of it here. I double clicked on the stage. So now I can move this guy around and I'm outside of both of these on the stage. Now, if I grab it on the corner with uh, the snap to objects magnet icon highlighted, you'll notice that it snaps, Ooh, snappy. And if I hold control and drag again, or I hit control C and then control V, I can snap it again. And again. I'm just going to delete that guy. Because who needs him? Who needs him? And copy and copy. And there we go. So, now, if you want to prevent yourself from messing up, here's my recommendation. Take the middle guy, do control X, create a new layer, and do control shift V, which will paste it in place. So he's right in the center still. And then um, lock layer one. So you can call layer one, I don't know, uh, extras. I see a lot of people when they're first learning about symbols, they get confused. So basically we see here on this layer, the extras are all the ones around, but then this middle guy is the one that I'm actually gonna export when this is all said and done. Hope that makes sense. Okay, so leave the extras visible but then go inside of, well, yeah, let's do that. Let's change the, the extra's color to, I don't know, uh, purple, dark, something. Uh, you can just double click on this here and it'll change it. So now I can see where they are. Because otherwise if I leave it like this and I go inside of the middle one, they stay white. So it's still kind of confusing. So if you really want them to just look different, you can switch on outline mode and then go in here. And now, as you can see, we can do this biz. Uh, like this. So I can like kind of eyeball it. I'll worry about the, the details later. And then I can come down here. And you see there's the shape that I just drew. And I can tile this guy. Fancy, right? So now I have created a texture that tells, and now I'm painting over the edge. And the reason why I'm doing it now, but I said don't do it before, is because I had to get these exactly lined up. And you can see that they are exact. And so now that they're positioned, I can I can paint wherever the heck I want. No big deal. Not even a thing. And then over here, oh boy, that's a Doozy, I don't know. Good idea. This isn't actually the shape I wanted to do at all, but that's how life is. You just end up making shapes you didn't mean to make. All right, so now if we look at this, we can see what our texture. Ooh, um, that reminds me. Uh, you'll want to go inside of your symbol and right-click on border and turn it into a guide layer. That means when you're out here on the stage, uh, the border won't show up because it's a guide layer. So I'm looking at this tiled texture and I'm thinking to myself, yeah, it, it tiles, all right. It looks kind of, whatever. So I'm gonna delete it. All right, now you might be wondering, okay, this is great, Jason. You showed me how to tile a texture, but what's the point? Why would I ever wanna make a tiling texture? Well, when you're working in a 3D game engine, or even in a 2D game engine, sometimes you want a texture that you can pan, like so, and you might pan that texture on a flat card, or you might have like a half pipe that like wraps around that you would pan it on. An example of this would be like a waterfall, where you're panning a texture over the, the geometry of the water, 
and it looks like water is flowing because you've got a texture flowing on it. Or you might have like a spiral, uh, like an uncoiled spring, it's like a long flat face. You might texture some like wisps that might flow up that spiral. And uh, if it repeats side to side and up and, and up and down, then when you slide it and then the break comes at the end of the texture, it just looks like one continuous wisp or water ripple or whatever it is that you're doing. So that's why. There you go. But what are we going to do today, you might ask? We, in the spirit of the Halloween season, which it is at the moment of recording this video, we are in spooky time. And so what we're going to do is spooky texture. How might one do a spooky texture, you may ask. And I'm glad you did. I'm going to show you. I hope. I don't know, this might look spooky. I'm just kind of feeling out these bits here. I'm doing the thing I told you not to do. Hang on. There we go. I was already getting confused. I'm like, I don't know. Whoa, this is confusing, guys. I confused myself. Is that even right? Mm, that looks bad. In this tutorial, you'll see you will see me fail multiple times. It's been a day. I'll tell you what. All right. Here's a way to think of this. I want these smoky wisps to feel kind of tattered. So we got smoky wisps going on, right? There's a smoky wisp. There's a smoky wisp at the edge. And there it comes in from the side. Here's one that comes down from the top. And then it's blunted on top because I'm assuming that whenever I end up using this texture, it's going to be moving upward, generally speaking. I guess that'll just connect into that guy. Cool. Got my smoke wisps going on. All right, so it's looking pretty good. You got a little gap over here. You want to fill in your gaps because they look funny. You see how there's a gap right there? Oh, there isn't a gap right there. It's just because those two are overlapping. Of course. All right. So when you're designing these kinds of textures, I mean, you could try just painting it from scratch. But for me, I oftentimes find that it doesn't work that way. In this first tutorial, I'm just going to like make the basic shapes, and then in the next one, I'm actually going to take it into Photoshop, and I'm going to polish it up, make it look like actual wisps, stuff like that. But here, I'm just kind of defining, you know, I'm like erasing stuff away, trying to find these negative shapes, and this is where it starts to get fun. So you want to paint these little faces in here, because guys, this is spooky. This is a spooky town, man. So the key to a spooky face is that the eyes are a little bit smaller than the mouth. That's all you really got to worry about. The rules other than that, gosh, I don't know. It doesn't really matter. I mean, the eyes can be the same shapes. They can be odd shapes. Just spooky shapes. And tortured souls. Ooh, said. Okay, here we go. Yeah. I mean, the, the whole process is kind of messy. I think it's kind of cute. Yeah, all right. So we got the spooky faces going on. Let's come back out here and show that. Now that is what I call a repeating tiling texture. So at this point, I could get really nitpicky about, oh, this thing here is 
kind of weird looking. But because I'm going to take this into Photoshop and smudge it up, I'm not really concerned about that. So, because I mean the smudges are going to cover up that kind of thing. So, what I'm going to focus on more is just the general sheet making. So, this guy here. I mean, you see this? He's kind of flat. And I want this to feel like it's moving upward. So, okay, it's, it's kind of my groove. I might actually, I might actually do the thing that I just said don't do. There we go, I fixed it. You didn't see anything. anything. Okay. Um, I don't really like that solution because then I have like this point right here. Making is fun. Let's figure it out. Yeah, okay. I can buy it. Basically, when I get this into Photoshop, I'll do the next phase of like um, refining out these guys, figuring out how they're going to go. That's really going to be where this thing starts to come to life. Mostly, I just wanted to show you how to make it tile and flash and then in Photoshop I'll show you what I use to make it tile in Photoshop and then you'll know how to make textures tile in two programs there you go I hope you learned something